Hey everybody, hope everybody is doing well. My name is Charles Rice Gonzalez and I wanna welcome you all to Austell Center for the Arts and Culture. We have had a great season of dance and music, theater and wonderful performances. And tonight is uh, going to continue uh, the offerings that we have. Uh, we welcome you to our space um, here in the virtual area, in the virtual world, but Austell exists in the Bronx at Austell's Community College. Uh, the also centers there right on the Grand Concourse on 149th Street. But we're streaming to you uh, tonight live. You're going to see a wonderful performance and you're going to also have a wonderful Q&A with our choreographer. Um, tonight, we are very excited to have Javier Palilla. And uh, Javier is a movement-based artist from San Juan, Puerto Rico. And we just, we were on a little Zoom earlier. He is there right now, but will be with us uh, at the end. Um, but his choreographic work has been presented at various venues, such as Dixon Place, the Kennedy Center for the Performing Arts, uh, and the Inside Out stage at Jacob's Pillow, and of course, on Osto Center stage. Um, according to Javier, um, he, we're all linked by a thin thread of our dreams. So tonight's performance of In the Quiet of the Wood explores this connection through the dreamscapes of six people who collectively help each other cope with their troubled past and hidden traumas. It is a digital premiere performance, so you're the first ones who are going to lay eyes on this, uh, created during the company's CUNY Dance Initiative Residency at Osso Center for the Arts and Culture, which is an integral part of Osso's Community College, uh, the City University of New York. The Osso Center is recognized nationally as a leader in Latino, Latina, Latinx, and African-based programming. The CUNY Dance Initiative receives major support from the Howard Gilman Foundation and the Merlitz Gilmore Foundation. Additional support is provided by the SHS Foundation, Jerome Robbins Foundation, the Harkins Foundation for Dance, and, and an award from the National Endowment for the Arts. CDI is part of the Dance NYC's New York City Dance Rehearsal Space Subsidy Program that's made possible by the Andrew W. Mellon Foundation. So we share all that because in order to get art done, it needs support. So we thank all of those uh, foundations and individuals and institutions for supporting the CUNY Dance Initiative, uh, for supporting through them, OSTOS, and we thank all of you for your support with being with us here tonight. So without any further ado, please enjoy Javier Padilla's In the Quiet of the Wood.
Where am I? You know exactly where you are. We're at the edge of the woods, right over the ridge. Look how beautiful it is. The edge of everything. The edge of nothingness. To fall is to fly. We come here when there's business unfinished, when there's a love unresolved, remembering what it was like to fall. Waking up, remembering the dream, it's a hazy moment. I remember the light, how it fogged out behind him it flooded my vision, creating silhouettes and days. It felt like the first ray of sunshine poking through trees in the morning. There was maybe hope there. A lonesome sense of hope. A space where illusion was reality. I remember touching your face the sun through your eyelashes and the fuzz on your cheeks, your face, the one I love most in the world. I remember what it was to feel your nose on my nose, your lips on my lips. I remember never wanting to leave, to suspend the moment into an infinity of moments, your face peaceful and unmoving. I remember wanting to feel nothing else, willing to get burned for your touch.
remember smoke in a dark room, chatter, a buzz in my ears, smoke filling the cracks between elbows and behind knees, standing room squeezing oxygen out of the room, smoke creeping in to replace it, bodies everywhere, faces unknown, sound decibels too high, and you in the corner, smoke swirling your dark head, not knowing if this is a dream. Or a nightmare. to dunk you under, swallowing the drain when I fell asleep at the mess, swelling up like a balloon as the tub overflows, soaking memories into the tiles, loving you so much, I <laughs> wash your hair at the minimum. Laughing from my belly at its fullest. I remember. These times mirrored all the blue days. I get my jeans wet. 
dragging you out of the puddles in the rain, and you'd stand up to me. Force me to take breaks with your chest out, because even then you knew you were more important than me. keep coming back. We come here to escape, to feel supported. It's the only way we can feel safe. No danger here, just our memories taunting us, healing us, putting us to sleep. a way out. To exit means to heal. To go out, one must go in.
remember the pressure on my chest. Paired with the quickening of my breath, the pressure is causing me to slip deeper into the darkness, into this body away from the surface. Why does that bring fear? They miss me. They need me and I them. But why do I prefer that surface slowness, the evens of heartbeats? My heart slows down. I panic. Darkness takes over. another person. I welcomed it into my body. I lowered them slowly on my back. I wanted them to rest. I rolled them off my spine into a soft place. The place is gentle and quiet. I remember a steel cylinder in my esophagus, weighted and immobile, lodged in my throat by my own hands. I didn't panic. It was part of me, heavy, but mine. I both appreciated and resented its placement. Do you remember now? We are all one. We share the same loss, the same sensation, the same feeling. Do you remember now? I remember smiling. I remember laughter. I remember the sound of the night. I remember shimmery skies. I remember a breeze of comfort. I remember my chest was warm, but my toes were cold. I remember my hands were sweating. I remember watching the water come close. I remember moving. I remember holding hands. I remember thinking. I remember when I left. I remember closing my eyes. 
I remember the moonlight reflecting. I remember the rhythm of the waves. I remember staying quiet. I remember smoke in a dark room. I remember waves crashing into me. I remember underwater. I remember the light. I remember crocodiles. I remember touching your face. I remember heads, cars banging. I remember what it felt to be out of control. I remember wanting to get out. I remember who I used to be. I remember a vastness. I remember the rope swing above the lake. I remember being unfaithful. I remember torchlight. I remember soft dirt and starry skies. I remember lands that don't exist. I remember me. I remember my bones too limp. I remember floating. I remember sinking. I'm submerged. I'm deep. Deep, deep in the water, I must see unbound. I search for warmth, given to the cold, caressing every nerve and feeler edge of my bones. I swim out of necessity, I swim to survive. My toes reach the floor and I breathe. At the edge of the water, I see land, I see hope. I am drenched, and drenched is what I've always felt. Heavy, heavy heavy under the lightness of the water. I waddle my way to land. My ankles give in to dark mud. tsunamis have felt once their last wave was crested. I'm soaked. I lie still while I shake and tremble. Another dream. I keep waking up to this same dream. I remember waves 
crashing into me. Waves contained like a wave pool, constant and even, crashing into me, my back against the wall. Waves rushing over me, head underwater, fingers pinching nose, waiting for the tide to pass. Waves cleansing and ripping apart who I once was, threatening lack of air. I remember waves crashing into me on a sunny day, a perfect one where you'd rather just lay on the sand and relish the sun on your skin, sun soaked. I remember waves holding me up, floating, bobbing, Waves tender like a hand, pulling me up, and suddenly, I wake up. Got it. That was wonderful. Like, I, I'm I'm alone in my home applauding. Well, I'm not at home. I'm not uh, another space. But um, hello, everybody. We are welcoming Javier Padilla, the choreographer um, for tonight's piece. And we'll talk about what that means in terms of choreography for the piece. It was stunning and beautiful and hypnotic and pensive. And um, the movement was just gorgeous. And people are expressing their um, themselves in the chat as well, which is beautiful. And actually, if you have a question, you can certainly put it um, in the chat so we can speak to Javier um, about this work that we all just experienced this really wonderful piece. Um, great title as well. There is a lot of quiet inside of the piece, but there's also a lot of power and sound and specific, literally sound in the piece. But um, everyone, please welcome Javier. And Javier, uh, we were on earlier and got to see a little of it because, you know, he choreographed it, but it was, I think, the first time him seeing this edit of it. So, um, and he was very emotional. I want to, I want you to tell us what, you, how you felt about what you saw, and what was the emotion about. Yeah, I was. It's been a year. Twenty twenty was really intense, and I'm just really happy and excited that we've been working on this work for the past two years and a half and the pandemic stopped that for a brief second we were going to premiere it in march of 2020 or a version of it so it was just nice to trust a lot of people and trust Ostos with the editing and trust my dancers and trust myself to make the work so it was nice to be excited about a work again and seeing that art is still alive and dance isn't dead and we can still as a community keep going forward and keep making art safe. So it was just a lot of things I haven't felt in a really long time. <laughs> That's great. I'm sorry you put the sound off because we were hearing the coquis in the background, right? Because you're in San Juan. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely little rainfall too. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So tell us about this. You said that you used the word trust a lot, like trusting in this and trusting yourself. Um, so talk to me about what it was like to be creating this dance um, during, I guess, now toward the tail end of the pandemic and being able to present it, what was it like for you and for your dancers? What was that process like? Uh, yeah, I think in these new spaces, it's very important to 
have people to trust in rehearsal, especially when uh, safety protocols are involved. You want to make sure that everyone is safe and that they're feeling supported in this space. So I just use the word trust a lot because that's what I want my cast to feel about me. I want them to be able to trust me not only as a leader, but as a friend. So it was a really eye-opening experience to have those uh, safety protocols and make sure that everyone's safe, but also while making the work, making sure that everyone's feeling comfortable during the process, before the process, after the process. So especially this residency in specific just showed me a lot of trust and that a lot of people, um, you know, just talking again about 2020, feeling like we could come back into it all together and it felt like a community again. So it was nice to be open with sharing trust and sharing space and sharing movement. Yeah, I think the pandemic was hard on many artists and uh, dance artists had a lot of particular challenges because then very often some, you know, some dancers work do solo work, but some dancers and choreographers work in groups. I know that this group, this community that you form is important to you when you're creating dance, right? So, um, so talk to us about the dancers, like who were they? How did you come together with them? How did you build that trust? Yeah, so we've been working on this for the past two years. So some people have, this is like a rotating cast of folks, uh, but everyone who's been in the work has always just been a friend, someone that I knew through another person or someone that I knew through a dance intensive or other experiences um, and some even through auditions, but uh, these are all my very close personal friends. One of them is my roommate. My other roommate was in this work a year and a half ago when we first made it. Uh, and that just deepens the process. Like we've been dancing together for, I would say like a year. Some of us have danced for like two and three years and a half, maybe even more. Some of us have just started dancing together. Uh, but that sense of relationship was super important to me. My main thing is if I, <laughs> I would, my company members, I can always have a drink with them. It's my friend, I can always just chat with them. So creating the group was always super fun and bringing them onto this project specifically was also just a no brainer. I was like, yes, let's keep building this work. Let's keep uh, feeling like there's community still and creating that community. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the movement was, was you know, strong movement for, you know, you, you made them work, uh, which is good. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it was also, you know, because because dance communicates in a lot of different kinds of ways and clearly through the movement, there's that, I think I props to everyone with the lighting that was really stunning, you created intimacy with that lighting, right? Um, and then there was text, all the different stories and there was some that were even poetic. So how did the text get in there and who wrote it? The text was made by the dancers. Most of the text that we used is newish. We made a free write experiment on one of the rehearsals where we just focused on the thematic of the work and exploring like this, the theme of I remember, like remembering dreams. So the text was uh, primarily by the dancers. And I think one of the texts, uh, two of the texts and two of the solos uh, I wrote for the first iteration a couple of years ago. And when we're talking about the, the uh, pandemic, the masks become part of the costume, right? So were you, I know there was a function to them but were you thinking of any other purpose that the mask could have served or were serving in this piece or talk to me about the mask? To be fully blunt, it was a protocol situation. <laughs> but, uh, it was interesting. I think rehearsing with masks also provided a, an extra layer of exhaustion for the performers. So it, it was like an actual, there was a lot more effort because of the mask and I don't know if it's a great thing, but yeah, I definitely see a little bit more exertion because of the mask and like finding that air again. Mm -hmm. Well, um, let me just at least share a comment or two from the, from the chat. Um, and it says, Michelle Thompson, Ehrlich, Stunning Dances and, and Javi, congrats. I absolutely love this work. I appreciated the intricacies and details and also the sweeping and bold sensations that swelled up. The lighting was absolutely incredible. The edits were great too. I felt close to the dance, which I love, but I still saw the architecture of the space. The dancers were really shined, uh, shined in the solo work. And I found myself captivated by the connecting partnering. Um, big love to you, Javi, and your dancers. Um, beautiful comments. Let's see if folks, yeah, you can put stuff in the chat if you have a question, but yeah, talk about that. There was, um, there was also like beautiful transitions, both in terms of movement and in terms of text. And I know, don't know if they were referring to that in the, um, the, the partnering that they were 
um, talking about. But talk to me about that, the transitions from piece to piece. Like there's, you know, I'm, I'm remembering, you know, one uh, piece was, was talking, there was a female dancer standing and then there was a transition where the other one took place and the voice changed. So talk to me about the transitions and how you were weaving all of this together. So we, I'm really interested in narrative and storytelling. So that was just our trial run into seeing how we can keep weaving together like story and movement. Uh, so not just finding moments of like high intensity dancing, but like how can we turn this movement into, you know, more of a narrative. So transitionally, a lot of the things weren't built, like everything we transition wise, we built at our residency at Ostos, which was amazing just to like kind of hone in and see, okay, this section goes great next to this section. And then we, I think we changed the order over like three to four times. <laughs> so my cast really was patient with me, but yeah. And in terms of how the text plays in, we were trying to build these characters and like extend these narrative threads a little bit longer. I think in the third iteration, whatever it may be, we'll hone in a little bit deeper and make the work a little bit longer. Uh, but yeah, those transitions of text and movement were mostly to explore them as characters within the performance, as opposed to just like, oh, okay, we're, we're seeing this abstract version of these relationships, but then if we can deepen them through these small moments of either text or just simple spatial direction, then that was my main interest in transitions. Mm -hmm. Cool. So um, if you had a wish or could say, what I wish the audience takes away from this, what would that be? I think my main thing for this work was just to, uh, like a sigh of just like, oh, I'm seeing this, like this unfold in front of me. and hopefully that they could relate to either one of the solos or maybe the group work. Uh, I feel the work just being like ultra personal and then at the same time, super universal. Like I see a lot of myself in the work, but at the same time, looking at it from the outside, not as the maker, I can definitely see like my friends or my mom or my dad or other people in my life that I can see like, oh wait, they would totally connect with this moment. <laughs> I think that's the beauty of, of art in general, right? That you can create a piece that could come from a very personal place and yet speaking to a bigger audience, right? Or speaking to other individuals, you know, that your experience kind of could resonate with others or, you know, the other people can get something or have an experience with your, with your experience. Um, well, I think you've been successful, you know, with, um, with this evening, because in addition to the one I read, there are, you know, this beautiful performance, um, wow, great, bravo, applause, yay, Javi, you know, lovely, very lovely and moving. And um, it seems like the audience certainly had an experience um, with this work tonight. So thank you for that. Um, we want to, before we close, we'd like to, if anyone else has a question or anything you, you want to know about the piece. I have, so I have one last question. You said um, that you saw yourself. What did you see of yourself in this, in this piece? I saw just, uh, I saw a lot of my, um, it was just a very healing moment and it was like a lot of, a lot of accepting, lots of letting go, lots of releasing. Uh, so I see myself in the work of the work in the making of the work and the whole thing of it. I just see so much of our labor as dancers and as makers, as performers. So it was, I see, and also just like seeing my, what's in my head and just like planted on stage was super satisfying. So when I say I see myself, I see myself as the maker and like as the artist and seeing it from the outside and seeing all of it play from beginning to end is just really overwhelming to see your work and just like, oh my God, it exists. It lives outside of my head or my notebooks or like all these videos that we've made for over two years like workshopping this material. Uh, so I see myself not only today, but I see myself a year ago in that rehearsal where we made that one thing. And then two years ago when we first started the work. So it almost feels like a time capsule of me as an artist and me living in the city. So it's really, really cool to see that. Well, I think one of the things that I certainly will take, take away from it is, is that sense of healing that you uh, talked about. I felt there was an emotional kind of connection and emotional 
healing, like there was something soothing and liberating about what they were talking about. And even inside of the movement, there was that as well, that sense that you took of release as well, that that was certainly something I'm taking away from it. So thank you for that gift that you have given me and to given to all of us tonight. Um, we love our relationship with you and we love, and I look forward to seeing more things happening with you in your work. And I wanna just give you a big congratulations from all of us here in New York City and in the Bronx. You know, thanks for bringing your work to Ostos and um, always serving it up when you do. Thank you for the invite. Yeah. Okay, everyone. Well, thank you so much for being with us with Ostos. Our season is kind of follows a little bit of a fall, spring season. So we're kind of at the, we've come in for a landing, but stay tuned for more good stuff to come to Osto Center and stay tuned and we'll let you know when we get the green light to be live in the space. You know, we'll have, we're glad to have you all back there. But until then, we will keep uh, providing a way or finding a way to bring arts to all of you. So thank you for your support. Thank you for being with us and we'll see you all soon. <laughs>